ribamipide, which is a, a newer molecule which has been out for the last uh, three or four years now and uh, is uh, very useful in inflammatory dry eye. Dr. Banati. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Rishi. So I'll quickly run through the, the cyclosporin uses. Is it worth its salt? And as Dr. Rishi rightly pointed out, that it's been in use for uh, quite, a, quite a while right now. But then uh, uh, we need to understand uh, how is it working and when will it work when you, or when do you need to prescribe uh, topical cyclosporin in dry eye disease management in your patients. So again, uh, it boils down to understanding the molecular mechanisms. Uh, when you need to use the anti-inflammatory and the immunomodulating effects of topical cyclopodin on the ocular surface to help in the therapeutic effects in dry eye disease. So by and large, we still use the, the simpler ocular surface evaluation tests in our uh, management modalities. And uh, these would be probably enough to, to sort of decide the, the, the level of dry eye you're looking at in your particular patients. When you look at cyclosporin, it is a, a neutral hydrophobic cyclic peptide amino acid molecule and uh, with, with a given molecular weight as depicted here, but how does it really act? It acts as a, an inter it, uh, it acts by inhibiting interleukin to release from activated T cells. Well, that's a lot of, an, a lot of immunology to understand uh, for most of us. So just to simplify it down and make you understand at what molecular level does this molecule act, otherwise your treatment is going to be a failure when you just prescribe this for your patients. Basically, the T cells are of three types. You have the helper T cells, you have the suppressor T cells, and the killer T cells. The helper T cells, or the CD4, destroy infectious organisms. The suppressor T cells help to prevent or suppress the activity of other lymphocytes so that the normal tissues are not damaged. But when you look at cytotoxic T cells, or the killer T cells, these will recognize and destroy the abnormal or the infected cells. So there is a fine balance between these three which exists in the system. So when there are activated T cells, they release a lot of interleukins or inflammatory, inflammatory mediators. And uh, this is the level at which cyclosporin acts. It's a powerful T cell modulator and inhibits T cell from producing toxic mediators. So when this molecular mechanism is existing on the ocular surface and is resulting in damage, that is when you probably need to add on the cyclosporin for these patients. Otherwise, these patients are not going to be uh, very happy with these medicines. The fact is that the inflammation levels have gone to such extents and there is hypertonicity of tears. And if you add on a cyclosporin at this level, as in severe dry eye patients, the patient is going to immediately reject your prescription, coming back telling you cyclosporin per se also causes a lot of stinging when you use it on the ocular surface. So in hypertonic tears environment, you're going to prescribe a topical cyclosporin, the patient is not going to be compliant to usage. So the ideal or the potential candidate to whom you need to prescribe topical cyclosporin is when you're looking at probable moderate dry eye patients. You've already treated them with, or they are on treatment with lubricant therapy. You take care of their inflammatory status to bring it to an acceptable level, take care of the hypertonicity of the tears, and then add on a cyclosporin topical medication is when you're going to have a successful management of using this molecule and cyclosporin becomes worth its salt in, in such a scenario. So you learn to, you need to know when you need to add on cyclosporin. So why cyclosporin? You need to give it for a longer period of time and when cyclosporin, a ste it acts as a steroid sparing agent. It does not have the effects of uh, on raising IOPs or damaging the wound healing mechanisms. It's not catrogenic. It's particularly effective in patients who are uh, contact lens intolerance because of the dry eye disease that has developed. In a profile of uh, allergic diseases like VKC, eczema, atopic keratoconjunctivitis, and of course in superior um, keratolimbic conjunctivitis as well. But always remember you need to proceed this with adequate amount of lubricant therapy, decree, bring down their inflammatory levels to acceptable levels, take care of the tonicity, then add on cyclosporin. That remains the secret. And also cyclosporin needs a particular period of time. It's not a rapid acting and it needs about at least 12 weeks before its therapeutic effects are going to come into work. So you need to keep these mechanisms in place and you need to keep the therapy on for these patients so compliance is a major issue when you need the immune modulating anti-inflammatory effect of cyclosporin to come into action in these patients so we did do a molecular level study
had been we did an in vivo uh, confocal microscopic study and uh, comparing the prospective comparative trial when we used a, when we looked at a group of patients before and after uh, cyclosporine therapy in ocular surface disease due to chronic anti glaucoma therapy and we imaged their uh, subbasal nerve fiber layer uh,